Hello and welcome to Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. I'm your host, Raya Salter. I'm an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. I'm also the principal attorney of Imagine Power LLC. Power Up Hawaii is about a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To us here on the show, that means talking to all of the players who need to be engaged in the conversation, including those who may not be traditionally involved in the energy policy area. As we are well aware, we pay the highest energy rates in the country due to the need to import oil to burn. These high energy costs affect everyone in ways big and small. In particular, these high energy costs impact poor and low income people. High energy costs are a big part of Hawaii's high cost of living and have big impact on housing affordability. The numbers are staggering and they may surprise you. According to research done in this area by Fisher, Sheehan and Colton, home energy is a crippling financial burden for low income people in Hawaii. Hawaii households with incomes of below 50% of the federal poverty level pay 40% of their annual income simply on home energy bills. 40%. Home energy on affordability, however, is not only the province of the very poor. Those with incomes between 150 and 185% of poverty level take up 10% of income on energy. Hawaii households with incomes between 185 and 200% of the federal poverty level have energy bills equal to 8% of income. Of course, our housing costs are extremely high to begin with even before you take energy into account. I don't know anyone who isn't looking for more affordable housing, and affordable housing is in extremely short supply. This is a huge factor in why Hawaii has the nation's highest per capita rate of homelessness. It's also a reason why many people live in tight living quarters or leave Hawaii altogether. Now, it makes all the sense in the world that people who have extra space on their properties seek to turn those spaces into dwellings, typically called accessory dwelling units, or ADUs. This could be a dwelling for a relative or to establish a new income stream. Either way, it's an opportunity to bring more needed affordable and energy efficient housing to Hawaii. Now, as anyone who has ever tried to develop an accessory dwelling unit knows, it is not easy to build additional dwellings on your property and also adhere to the legal codes and standards. Today, we will speak with Eileen Lackaden of Hawaii Appleseed Center for Law and Economic Justice. Hawaii Appleseed Center, Hawaii Appleseed is a nonprofit law firm created to advocate on behalf of low income individuals and families in Hawaii on civil legal issues of statewide importance and to complement the assistance provided by existing legal services in the state. They work on issues of housing poverty and health, among other things. Now, Eileen leads Hawaii Appleseed's work on ADUs. After studying industrial and systems engineering at Virginia Tech, Eileen served as an AmeriCorps VISTA with Hawaii Appleseed. She hopes to apply her engineering background in innovative ways to carry out Hawaii Appleseed's mission and leave a lasting impact in the communities that she serves. Welcome, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me on your show today, Thank, <laughs> thank you so much, Eileen, for joining us. So first, I know I gave some introduction about it, but if you could tell us a little bit more about Hawaii Appleseed and the work that Hawaii Appleseed does in the state. So a lot of what we do is research, policy development, coalition building, um, and advocacy on key issues vital to economic self-sufficiency for Hawaii's residents. Uh, what we focus on are economic justice, housing, hunger, education, and health care. Um, and a lot of what I do is in research, education, and advocacy. Well, that's excellent. And I think um, that's why I'm so excited to have you here, because it makes sense that the folks who are really looking to see that um, uh, people in Hawaii can afford food, can afford health care, can afford housing, um, are involved in this energy conversation, particularly when you think about um, the amount of money that people, especially low-income people, spend on energy. Right. So 
Um, why don't you go ahead and tell us more about yourself and some of the work that you do with Hawaii Health? So I'm originally from New Jersey. I was born and raised there, and I ended up going to engineering school in Virginia. Um, and then I decided to come out and volunteer with Hawaii Appleseed as an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer. Um, and AmeriCorps VISTA places volunteers at organizations that fight against poverty across America. Um, I decided to do that, try to use my engineering background in a different way um, to try to give back to the community um, right out of college. So when I came on, I came on as their ADU uh, project coordinator. And what I did was um, kind of develop resources such as a manual kind of outlining the A to Z about ADUs oh, got in it. the city and county of Honolulu because they were just recently um, legalized here. So no one really knows what they are still, even though it's been a year and a half since the law passed. Um, so I did that and held a few uh, workshops in the community to educate the public and continue to do so. Well, excellent. Well, since uh, uh, we may as well, since you brought up the legality, we may as well talk a little bit about that. Um, if you could maybe give us some background on sort of what were the, what was the state of well, actually, maybe you could even back up and tell us a little bit about um, uh, housing affordability in Hawaii and what the state of ADUs was um, before the law changed, what happened and what, and what you guys helped do with a lot of other folks to make that law and make that law change for folks who, who may not know the story. Right. So back in the 80s, um, the state legislature actually made it a requirement for all of the counties to have some sort of law um, allowing second dwelling units on single family properties to create additional housing. Um, and those were called Ohana units, if you might have heard that term before. Um, but then later on, the legislature gave that power to the counties themselves, and e each mm -hmm. of the counties made their own specific rules. Oh, wow. So the city and county of Honolulu actually made it so that Ohana units are only for family members only. So a lot of those Ohana units that were built in the 80s that were rented out were continued to be rented out, but illegally people were, weren't paying taxes on those illegal units, causing a lot of problems um, between neighbors and just causing problems in the housing community. And I can imagine <coughs> if everyone's got different standards there's got to be a lot of confusion right, amongst right. the building community and amongst the property owners, amongst everybody. Right. And we thought that it doesn't really make sense that you limit it to family only. If you can rent these out to anybody responsibly, then that's a great idea to create additional housing units, um, much let me, needed. Let me ask, do you, do you know why that restriction was there? Why that restriction was put there to family only? I am not sure. It was a little bit of a specific <laughs> question, and you did say back in the 80s, which was a while ago, but yeah. I can speculate that various powers that be um, wanted to ease up, ease up the restrictions and, and enable folks to, ha to have more people live on these properties legally, but didn't want to create a cottage industry and rental. Yeah, right. It's, it involves actually enforcing those rules if you have to put rules in, so they just didn't allow it, I guess. Mm. But now they have changed their minds in recent years. Um, back in 2013, we released a report um, showing innovative ways to create additional housing units, which included accessory dwelling units um, and micro units, which existed here on Oahu before, but they kind of all got phased out Mm. And now we're trying to bring them back because those are ways we can easily create more housing units in the limited space that we have. That's exactly right. So tell us a bit more about, um, so they, when you say they changed their mind, it was like it was a family only. And then was, uh, tell us a little bit about this, the newer ADU law. Was that 2014 or 2015? Tell me a little about it. I'm not. Um, so... After we released our report in 2013, we released a policy brief specific to accessory dwelling units, 2014-2015. Um, 
um, worked with the local city government officials and the local construction industry to kind of put together a bill, um, Bill 20, which passed in September of 2015. Got it. Um, with much support from the mayor and uh, the city council. Fantastic. Tell us about this Bill 20 and, 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 and what its provisions were and the changes that it made. So it allowed Ohana units, it changed the Ohana uh, unit bill um, to include uh, detached units because Ohana units uh. were also required before to be attached to a single family house. But now it required them oh, to yeah, be that detached. Sounds so fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and give people more options. Yeah. In addition to that, um, it created, um, it legalized ADUs. So now people can build actual rental units attached or detached um, on their properties. So they're limited in size, of course, but it they are just like any apartment you would rent, um, but even nicer because you're in a single family neighborhood in a single family home, pretty much. <laughs> so go ahead and let's dig in and talk a little bit about these ADUs because I think they're they're pretty exciting because you know there's this opportunity now if you can build this um, you know standalone uh, unit on your property to do something that's kind of neat and cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you wrote the manual, so go ahead and tell us a bit about these ADUs. Um, so for the city and county of Honolulu, they're limited in size to 400 square feet if your lot is under 5,000 square feet in size, and then up to 800 square feet if your lot is over 5,000 square feet. So they're pretty small, but definitely big enough for at least two bedrooms if you go up to 800 square feet, which is great for families who don't want to raise their kids in an apartment complex. They right. want that single family neighborhood feel. Um, and it's definitely good for homeowners here. It doesn't require any government subsidy. Right, because people are looking to do this. Right, yeah. Everyone's it's, looking to do this. Right, it's such a great opportunity to invest in your property and build up your property's value um, by creating a rental unit. Um, and they can be really, really nice. They can be as simple as you want it to be. Uh, it could be attached, detached. It could be a garage conversion or carport conversion. It could be your basement. Um, there's so many different options you could take. And uh, who might typically, um, who might typically live in this type of unit? This could be a family member. It could be somebody renting. It could be anyone. Yeah. Right. Right. So traditionally, people will rent it to family or just anyone, you know, using the traditional models like Craigslist or, you know, Apartment Finder. Um, but there are a lot of students who are looking for housing in good neighborhoods. Um, and a lot of people are looking to age in place and stay yes, in their of houses. Course. That's exactly correct. Um, so they want to either move into their ADU and rent out their big house if their kids have moved out and it's just them on their own, or rent it to a caretaker um, if they need extra help at home to live with them. Well, we are about to go to a short break, and then we will be back with um, Eileen Lackadon from Hawaii Appleseed talking about accessory building units. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays. 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at three o'clock. And we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners. And I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. 
Hello, and welcome back to Power Up Hawaii. I'm your host, Raya Salter. We're here today talking with Eileen Makadan from Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Appleseed. Um, and we're talking about accessory dwelling un units, housing affordability, and also we'll talk a bit about energy efficiency. So thank you again so much for being here, Eileen. So we've been talking about these ADUs, we've been talking about their benefits and how it is um, really desirable for anyone who's got a property to have that option to be able to develop it and um, get some extra income or have a family member live with them uh, while not living with them. But what are some of the drawbacks and some of the pushback um, that has uh, come for the, against these ADUs? And, and from what corners does this opposition come from? Um, some people have complained that it'll overcrowd neighborhoods that are already overcrowded. But the thing is, some of these neighborhoods can't actually take on additional housing units. So wherever a neighborhood is too cramped, they're not going to be allowed. Um, but it's, it's kind of necessary for us to, to utilize some of these underutilized spaces yeah. in our urban neighborhoods. Um, and create additional dwelling units if people are willing to do it. Um, I think other drawbacks are the initial financial investment. Right. Construction is the most expensive in the country here. Um, so that's the thing. People need to actually have the money up front to do it. Um, ADUs can cost from maybe 20000 to 60000 just for mm. the supplies alone. Wow. So, so it could be two to three times that, including the labor. That's, that's a tremendous cost. Right. Well, we're talking about the cost of housing, um, I, uh, or the cost of, and, and the designs of these units. Um, a, I know that you guys have worked with various folks, architects and others in the building community to really work on some cool stuff for ADUs. Could you tell us a, l a little bit about that? Um, we did have one architect, Architects Hawaii, who developed a um, model for us um, to provide free to the public um, to show actually how cool an ADU could be um, for a model designed specifically for a property in Hawaii, um, and how cool it could look on the yard, um, how energy efficient it could be designed. Um, they came up with a really awesome uh, model for us for a single person. It has everything you need. It's an efficiency. Um, bed rolls down, a uh, tiny micro kitchen, but it has a lot of outdoor space. It has a lanai, good airflow, um, energy efficient appliances and everything. Um, so you can live in a very oh, comfortable yeah, space. Yeah, we've got some pictures. It looks, you know, and then there's so many different, this looks like sort of a very like a really kind of traditional, almost sort of like log cabin -y style yeah. um, of house that who, you know, that is extremely attractive. Um, yeah, and takes advantage of all that outdoor space. Um, and I'll ask, it, it also, um, and, and, you know, something that's interesting is when you think about these accessory units, um, you also think about utility service. Right. Um, and electricity and you know the energy and we talked about the energy costs so I would think that there's probably a lot of potential not only for they to be, to be energy efficient but to utilize solar um, or other Definitely. components or there's the potential for that is that correct yeah absolutely uh, especially with all those um, PV battery systems coming out it'll be so easy to power the entire ADU on a PV battery system alone because it's such a small unit um, solar water heater it can take everything a normal single family home can take on. And that is so interesting because now I think, you know, it, uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy are probably, can potentially anyway, be a big part of that investment decision when you're thinking about the energy costs because I, I don't know, I think I thought, you know, if, um, you know, if many of us have the dream of, of living in Hawaii in a small sort of, you know, simple, ADU type space somewhere right. and you know we've all looked at those um, you know those kits you can buy for like eight or nine thousand dollars and get some cool like bamboo temple type living <laughs> space or whatever and and um, you know I'm here now with these we're, we're talking about much larger investment um, uh, and it's it would it it would seem 
and actually I won't I won't ask you directly about this because it may or may not or it may or may not be your province but then if you're not going to have it be off the grid then you're going to have to um, talk to the utility company about extending the main and extending service out to that ADU. Yeah. Is that something that you're familiar with? I, I, it may not be your area. Um, I know that people have the option, people come to me all the time asking, do I have to right. have a separate utility or do I not? Can I include it with the house? Right. How do I bill it separately? But you have the option. It's actually up to the homeowner on what you want to do with all the utilities. Um, that is so interesting. Um, I'd be interested to know what the experience of it, you know, someone put doing an ADU has had right. with um, with the utility and making those decisions. Um, maybe we can do an, uh, maybe we can do another show on that. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we talked about the, the ADUs. We talked about the opportunities. Is is there a place on the island where some of these new, cool, innovative designs are uh, or ADUs are sort of popping up? Um. From what I've heard from the city, only about 100 maybe actual ADU permits have been given out um, with at least more than 1,100 uh, people applying initially with mm. interest. Wow. Um, but I think big areas these are going up are probably Hawaii Kai, where people have a little bit more space. Um, and I know a lot of people on um, the windward side who are looking into getting prefab units done uh, where they don't have to pay a lot for right, labor. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I know when I, uh, uh, I used to work on, on the mainland for uh, uh, environmental organizations and you know, prefabricated housing was a, a really big deal and a really important issue oh, yeah. um, in terms of advocacy. It's, um, it's not your, it's not our, you know, the previous generation's prefab housing. There's just some <laughs> great stuff made with like all kinds of, you know, materials that can be reclaimed. Exactly. Um, it, does, it doesn't need to be sort of a, you know, something plastic. Um, actually, um, uh, perhaps, now, your, your background was, is in also, is in the built environment, yeah? Um. Little or bit. no, more, more engineering. Okay, yeah. so I won't <laughs> go ahead and ask you more built environment questions. But um, so, what are some of the reasons why um, so many people showed interest and so many few people were able to actually get permits? I think it's just the hesitation because it's such a new thing um, to Oahu that you know people want to see what other other people are doing first. Uh, they want to see what they look like. They want to see them in their neighborhoods, and they want to see them being successfully used um, and used in a responsible way. Right. Um, and I think there will be continued interest. And as people kind of realize and save up for that initial investment, because it is a huge initial investment, um, they will actually go through with a project. Um, also, there's a lot of different companies that are offering ADU services, mm. like any contractor can do the work for you mm. if you hire an architect to do the actual design. Um, but more and more companies are popping up here and there um, offering prefabricated units, which tend to be cheaper. Cheaper. So that will entice the market a little bit more. Uh, well, I, thank you for that. I know that you have written a handbook in A to Z. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yes. Um, so it's about 60 pages long, um, <laughs> and it kind well, of... A to Z, so it's got to have some <laughs> substance there. Yeah. Um, so for people who are actually looking into building one of these things um, and don't know how to start at all, you can take this handbook, and it goes from step one, what is an ADU? Uh, what can it look like? Maybe so you can hold up the cover here. And be like, <laughs> Here's the handbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the first steps, like going to the city, filling out an, an ADU pre-check form to make sure that your property is eligible to add an ADU to it. Um, make sure utilities cover it, your road is wide enough, mm. make sure you have wastewater capacity, things like that. Um, and then about a month later, they'll tell you whether or not you can build one. And then at that point, it gives you options like you can look into construction professionals, um, 
We actually have a website in addition to our handbook. Oh, great. HawaiiADU.org. Oh, great. Um, where we have a list of construction professionals who have reached out to us uh, wanting to share that they're doing ADUs on Oahu. Um, I know there's a lot of local builders making tiny homes on Big Island. Yeah, that's so, a tiny home thing. That's yeah. very trendy. Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's pretty much an ADU, but ADUs can be a little bit bigger and more permanent. That's the only difference, really. Um, um, and we're seeing more and more companies added to our list as the months go by. I'm sure by next year it'll, it'll double. Um, but then back to the manual, <laughs> it goes into financing um, different mm. ways you can finance um, a, a home addition in general, um, how to properly hire a, a construction professional so you, you can trust who you're working with and trust them to do to build you the wonderful ADU that you're looking for. So it really kind of takes you from A to Z and sort of it's sort of a beginner to help you. And this is available yeah. on the website on yes. hawaiiappleseedadu.org? Hawaiiadu.org. Sorry, hawaiiadu.org. Mm -hmm. um, and we're about to close in a few minutes. Um, what can somebody do if they want to uh, get more information, get in touch with you guys? Um, figure out if there's a way they can help with the ADU project or other projects that Hawaii Appleseed does. Well, I welcome anyone to contact me at Hawaii Appleseed. Um, you can email me, Eileen at hiappleseed.org, or come to our Hawaii ADU website where we have all our resources available. We even have, um, in addition to the website and this manual, we have three open source plans available on our website that you can use, you can take to an architect and kind of make it your own and uh, have it site specifically designed. Well, can I say, I, yeah. I think this is tremendous and I just also want to say it's such a contribution for a VISTA volunteer, someone with a new, brand new engineering degree um, from Virginia Tech to decide to take basically a volunteer position to create these resources um, for uh, low-income folks in Hawaii and to help with housing affordability. I think it's just tremendous. Thank you so much, Eileen, for your work and for your being with us on the show today. And that just about wraps up another edition of Power Up Hawaii. Um, aloha, mahalo, and see you next week, everybody.